This is the Lock Designing Programmer, and what I have for you today is a 3D printed unpickable lock. It's not just very difficult to pick, it's impossible, I think. The only non-destructive way to open it without the key is to try every possible key, which will take a very long time. A lot of lock pickers think there's no such thing as an unpickable lock. They say things like, I've been asked hundreds or even thousands of times if there's a lock I can't pick, and my answer is usually the same. There are no locks I can't pick, but there are several locks I can't pick yet. That sounded like a challenge. So about seven years ago, I designed an unpickable lock, but I didn't have the resources to actually make it until recently. Here it is. It's printed using HP's MultiJet Fusion technology, which is similar to SLS. The result is very high quality and relatively cheap. This costs about 30 quid to print. It has a slightly unusual action, to open it, you have to push the key in a bit before you can turn it. There's a mechanism on the back to enforce this. The design is similar to a cross lock or a cruciform lock. The cross lock design allows it to have more pins, which is necessary because each pin only has two bittings. They're binary pins, either up or down. This version has space for 16 pins, although I've actually only used 11, which gives about 2,000 possible keys. In a standard cross lock, one of the sides of the key is slightly wider so that it can only be inserted in the correct orientation. I haven't done that here, so I can test incorrect keys by rotating it. If I rotate the key, then I can no longer open the lock. The key to the design is that it forces you to set the pin positions and then cuts off access to them before you can attempt to open the lock. This means you can't manipulate the pins while applying torque to the key, which is how locks are normally picked. Let me explain how it works. The lock is made of three concentric cylinders. The outer cylinder is the lock body, which doesn't move. The inner and middle cylinders are linked, so they turn together. The inner cylinder can slide a little bit along its axis, but the middle cylinder can only turn. This animation shows the internal mechanism. The pin stacks all start with two ball bearings, which means you can always push the inner cylinder back, even if you are using the incorrect key. Once you've done that, you can try to turn the key. If you have the correct key, the gaps between the upper pins will line up with the shear line between the middle and outer cylinders, and the lock can turn. If you have an incorrect key, you can still push the inner cylinder back, but then these double height pins will straddle the shear line and stop the lock from turning. At this point, the pins that are stopping it from opening are no longer accessible, so you can't try to move them and pick the lock, and that's what makes it unpickable. I think the next challenge is to make an unpickable lock that fits in a standard Euro profile. This might actually be useful, but it would also be a lot harder. Anyway, I hope this was interesting. Thanks for watching.